Hi, welcome to the Dr. Allie Show. My name is Dr. Allie Mendelson, and today I'm going to be doing a special show. I'm going to be answering some que- some questions from some of my listeners, and I've chosen the questions that really I get a lot of these same questions asked. So I've chosen the most frequently asked questions. Now, if you're listening right now and you have a question or you have a concern and you want to talk to me directly or set up a consultation, my my phone number to call is 888-522-3331. That's 888-522-3331. And give me a call, set up a consult if you have any questions, just please. The reason I do this show is I want to change and save people's lives. I want to give you information that you're really just not going to get anywhere. And I want to give you, I want to tell you the truth. That's why I do the show. So let's go over some of the main questions I get that again, for the last, uh, I've been doing a radio show for eight years. These are the most frequently asked questions. I'm going to, going to, I'm going to kind of just read you an email from, from someone who's listening. Dear Dr. Allie, for as long as I can remember, I've struggled with weight loss. I've tried many diets and sometimes will lose some weight, but it always comes back and worse. Now, I'm not sure if I'm choosing the wrong plan or if it's all a willpower problem and I need more discipline. What do you think are the secrets to losing weight and keeping it off? Thank you so much, Barbara. Um, Okay, Barbara and anyone else out there who struggles with weight loss resistance, which is what we call it, and I know a lot of people do. I'm, I would say more than half the people that come into my office have this problem. So there is something you can do. And it's not all, you know, it's not all a willpower problem. It really isn't. And it's not that you have no discipline and you have no willpower. And it's not that you're ex- not exercising enough. We, we don't have a lot of good information about nutrition and about proper exercise. We've been told that you have to eat less, ca- you have to eat a certain amount of calories and you have to burn off more calories than you eat in order to lose weight. That is completely wrong. It doesn't work that way. Weight loss is all about hormones, insulin, and leptin, okay? And it's about proper exercise. I'm going to get a little more specific about it, but quickly with the proper exercise, many people think that they have to go to the gym for an hour and a half, two hours a day to burn off to burn off their fat. And that's not the best way to exercise. In fact, if you exercise that way, what you're really doing is you're you're really creating stress hormones. It's stressful for your body to exercise that much. You're creating stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline, and specifically cortisol will cause you to retain weight and to gain weight around your middle. So doing that type of exercise is not ideal. Okay, doing surge training or burst training, we call it, where you go hard for 20 seconds, rest for 20 seconds, hard for 20 seconds, rest for 20 seconds. You can do that with any type of, you can jog, you can do the elliptical, you can lift weights, you have to do proper form when you're going hard. And you do that for 15 minutes a day and you will not be producing any cortisol, but you will be burning off cortisol. And when you exercise like that, you will burn fat for 36 hours following that type of exercise. So exercising properly is very important for weight loss because you, you want to be burning fat for most of your day. You don't, if you do a long, slow pace on the elliptical, 45 minutes an hour, you may burn some fat while you're doing it, but as soon as you stop, those benefits stop. And then you've increased your cortisol. And believe me, nowadays, people, we do not, no one nowadays needs more stress hormones. There's enough stress in our lives. There's too much stress in our lives. So doing an exercise that is going to produce more stress hormones is not something that you want to do. But doing the surge training will burn stress hormones. So that's the number, that's one of the biggest things, biggest mistakes people make with the weight loss is thinking they just have to exercise constantly. And that's not true. There's nothing wrong with, you know, going for long walks. That's not going to produce cortisol. It's that long, slow, half running, half walking, heart rate at 60%. That's what produces the stress hormones if you do that for too long a time. And of course, let's of course eating. Now, we've been told just watch your calories. Don't eat too many calories. It, calories is not what causes us to gain weight. What causes us to gain weight is hormones, like I said, insulin and leptin. 
Now I'm going to explain something that's going to open up a lot of eyes. It's something that we don't learn in, in mainstream. So we have, you have a hormone in your body called leptin. Now leptin is a hormone that's produced by your fat cells. So your fat cells, each of your fat cells, when they're healthy, will release leptin. Your brain, what it does is it detects and measures the amount of leptin that's being released from your fat cells. So we are either, you're either a fat burner or a sugar burner. Now let's go back 200 years, 300, 400, 500 years where people would starve to death because they didn't have enough food. There was no Whole Foods, there was no, right? There was no McDonald's, there was nothing out there. Some people would starve to death. So there's a, there's a, a mechanism in your body, like an emergency mechanism, safety mechanism. So if you're not getting enough, stick with me, this might be confusing for a minute, but it will be cleared up, I promise. If you're not eating enough food, and you lose too much weight, you will not have a lot of fat cells. And if you don't have a lot of fat cells, your brain, you don't, ha- you don't produce enough leptin. You produce a smaller amount of leptin because fat cells produce leptin. If your brain detects not enough leptin or too little leptin, it will go into emergency mode so that and turn you into a sugar burner instead of a fat burner. Because if you have not enough fat cells and you keep burning fat, what will happen is you will burn through your organs and your brain and you will die of starvation, basically. So that is the emergency mechanism that your body switches you over to becoming a sugar burner. So when you're a sugar burner, you don't burn any fat no matter what you do. You only burn sugar. And when you burn sugar, all you, you crave sugar. It caused people who were starving to go out and find anything and find food and find berries and honey and whatever they can find that would put on the weight because sugar puts on the weight. And then when their fat cells went back up to a, a good normal level that the brain liked, it would switch them back to fat burning. The sugar cravings would go away. Their appetite would go way down and they would just be burning fat for energy. Now let's fast forward 100, 200 years, 300 years. In today's world, there is no shortage of food. We have lots and lots of fat cells releasing lots and lots of leptin. Now what else we have in today's world is a lot of toxins. We put a lot of preservatives and chemicals and toxins in our pesticides and all of those things get stored in your fat cells. If your fat cells have too much toxicity, they will release an enormous amount of leptin, four times the amount of leptin. Now, there is, this is interesting. This is what happens is if you have too many fat cells and they're releasing too much leptin, it will actually burn out the leptin receptors and your brain will detect zero leptin. And if it detects zero leptin, because the receptors are burned out from so much leptin, so much fat cells, too much leptin being released from your fat cells because of toxicity, it will burn out the receptors, your brain will detect zero leptin, and you will be switched to becoming a sugar burner. And when you're a sugar burner, you don't burn any fat. You can exercise all day, and you don't burn any fat. You can eat nothing, and you don't burn any fat. You don't burn any fat until we ha- until your body gets switched back to fat burning, okay? This is why people are weight loss resistant because they're continuing to eat foods that turn to sugar. Sugar, flour, any kind of grain, whole grain, or you know, organic oats and whole grain, seven grain bread, and even sprouted to some degree. Brown rice, quinoa, you know, buckwheat, All of these grains turn to sugar. When you have sugar entering your body, your body stays a sugar burner. You crave and crave and crave sugar. And you're very, very, very hungry all the time. That's what sugar burner is. So that's why you're weight loss resistance because you're a sugar burner. To get to become a fat burner, you have to go on what I call the advanced plan. Now this is something that you need to come in for a consultation and we have to look at what you're eating and there's a great book that we have that can help with recipes. So I would recommend calling me right now, scheduling an appointment to talk to me about becoming a a sugar, a fat burner. 
Um, again, my name is Dr. Ali Mendelson. I'm in Farmington. My phone number is 888-522-3331. So please call and schedule a consult. It's a free consultation for the first 10 people who call. Again, it's 888-522-3331. So to become a fat burner, you have to exercise properly. You have to have the right nutrients in your body. So we need to increase the nutrients and we need to get rid of anything that turns to sugar. This is not the Atkins diet in any way. It's not even a diet. It's just learning how to eat properly. And once you become a fat burner, you will drop the weight. It drops off. Um, sometimes there's a lot of toxicity. Sometimes it just, every, again, everyone is different. It's basically the same way that you eat. It's just we get rid of grains and sugars so that your bodies, your body can reset and your brain can, and you can re release less leptin, and your brain can say, oh, okay, everything's okay, now you're a fat burner. When you become a fat burner, your appetite almost goes away, you don't crave sugars or carbs anymore, those cravings and those addictions go away, you feel calmer, and you burn fat. For anyone out there who is, talks about be, being weight loss resistant, or not being able to lose weight. It's not a discipline. It's not a willpower. It is it is the, the way you're eating and the way you're exercising. And you don't have to eat a little teeny bit and exercise a lot. You just have to eat the right foods and exercise properly. Okay, I hope I've helped a few people and answered some questions and hope that you call me and get your and get into the office so we can help you get on a really good program. So I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna, there's another question. I'm gonna answer the next question. Um, hi, Dr. Allie. I've suffered from chronic headaches for more than 10 years and nothing seems to work well. I'll take pain relievers to get me through the day, but the headaches always come back and I feel like I'm on a roller coaster. Some days it's so bad I can barely get up. Is there any way to break this cycle? I appreciate any advice you may have, Marie. In 20 years of practice, I see more headaches, more people with chronic headaches almost than anything else. And I, you know, I've never been, I've never suffered from headaches personally. I've never suffered from headaches personally, but the few times in my life I've had headaches, I have to say, it's absolutely horrible way to live. I, I don't know how people get through their day when they have headaches. I really don't. And I do understand why if you have headaches, you would do anything to get rid of them, including taking, taking pain relievers all day. I get that because it's, it's a very, very difficult way to live, but we want to, we do, you can break that cycle. You can get better. The problem with headaches is the way we look at headaches and the way the medical system looks at headaches in our country is they just say, oh, you have headaches. That's too bad. Here, take these pills. I don't know what to tell you. Drink more water. I mean, I don't know. There's, you know, you get told, or it's in your head, or whatever you get, whatever you get told when you have the headaches. It's just that's what you have. You have to learn to live with it, and that is a complete lie. Any time you have a symptom that's chronic, that you have every day, three times a week, twice a week, once a week, it's chronic. You got headaches once a week for a year. That's fifty-two headaches. You should have no headaches. You should get a headache once a year, maybe if it's in the middle of the summer, you don't drink enough water or you overexert yourself or something like that. But head it's not normal. It is common to have headaches, but it's not normal to have headaches. So if you have chronic headaches, what we need to do is we need to find the cause of the problem. You do not want to manage that with medication, even over-the-counter medication. Over-the-counter medication is dangerous and deadly. And if you take too much Tylenol, too much aspirin, you can have, you can have liver failure and you can have kidney failure. And that is serious. It is not safe to take these medications. So if you have headaches, you have to come in for a consultation because we have to find the cause of your headaches. Most of the time, the cause of headaches is pressure on the spinal cord and the brain stem in the neck, cutting off the flow of information from the brain to the body back again. And pressure on the brain stem will, not, will mess up the amount of blood going to your brain, the amount of blood and oxygen going to your brain, and you'll get headaches. And you'll just keep getting headaches until we find the cause and find the pressure 
where is the pressure on the brainstem? Where is the pressure on the spinal cord in your neck? We have to remove that pressure, of course, non-invasively with gentle adjustments to the spine. It takes the pressure off. Your body can now function better. Your brain can get the proper amount of blood flow and oxygen and your headaches go away. In 20 years, I have, I'm not sure if anyone has come in that hasn't had relief from headaches. I've had people come in who have suffered from daily headaches for 20, between 20 and 40 years. And within weeks, many times, those headaches go away and don't come back. We have to keep up with the treatment. Everyone gets treated based on the findings. I will take an x-ray to see where the pressure is. We work to correct that and remove the problem. Because if there is pressure on your brain stem or your spinal cord in your neck causing headaches, that same pressure is not allowing information to flow through your spinal cord to the rest of your organs, and you're going to end up with more serious health conditions if you don't address it. You have to always address the root cause of the problem. You never, ever cover up a problem with medication. It's a crazy thing to do. It's insane. It's like covering up a problem with a medication is... is is a very dangerous thing to do. You never want to ignore it. It's like driving your car and the oil light, light comes on and you just put a piece of duct tape over the oil light because you don't want to deal with changing your oil. Well, that is only going to go so far until your engine blows up. And it's the same thing with your body. If you don't, if you ignore a symptom or cover up a symptom, no matter what it is, of course, headaches is one of them. If you cover it up, every day with pills and pretend you don't have this problem, something very bad is going to happen to your health. And this is a warning sign. Headaches are a warning sign that there's something else going on. We need to get to the root cause of the problem and fix it so that you can be free from headaches without taking medication. You can have better quality of life and you're not going to have that surprise disease down the road because your organs aren't getting the information they need from your brain. I hope that helps. Again, if you have, if you do suffer from headaches, you have to come into the office and get a consultation because we have to find out the root cause of this problem. My my name is Dr. Allie Mendelson. I'm in Farmington. My phone number is 888-522-3331. You can also go onto my website, dralliechiro.com, D-R-A-L-L-I-E chiro.com and check out my website. All right. I'm, I probably have time for one more and then I may do another one of these calls next week. I'll get feedback from you and let you let me know if this is helpful. Okay. The next question. Hi, Dr. Ali. For the past couple of years, I've had difficulty falling asleep and staying asleep. I've tried Ambien, but don't like taking it for a a really lot for a huge variety of reasons, she says. I know you recommend natural solutions for problems like this and would love to hear some ideas. Thanks so much for your help, Susan. Susan, there's a huge epidemic of insomnia in our country, and there's so many reasons for it. There's so many reasons. And these sleep medications are extremely dangerous. People do crazy things while they're on Ambien. I don't know if you've heard, but people will eat in the middle of the night. They'll get up and they'll they'll sleep eat. There was a woman who gained 100 pounds because while she was on Ambien, she would get up in the middle of the night, go downstairs and eat and eat and eat and eat. She didn't even know what was going on. So people do a lot of really crazy things when they're on Ambien. That's not the reason to not take it. That's just one side effect. There's a lot of side effects. But let's think about this. If you're not sleeping... Sleeping is one of the basic things that we do. That's one of the basic functions of, one of the basic functions of your body is sleeping. If your body, if you can't sleep, that's a huge problem. That's a huge warning sign that your body's not functioning properly. It's not something to cover up with medication. It's not something to say, oh, I, you know, I don't sleep and oh, what are you going to do? And oh, I get to do a lot of things. It's a very serious problem. You know, tying some of these questions together, lack of sleep is one of the biggest causes that people have too much, that people gain weight because lack of sleep causes your body also to produce more cortisol. 
and when you produce more cortisol, you retain weight. So a lot of these things are very uh, are you know go together. So if you're not sleeping, losing lack of sleep is is again, if you don't sleep during the day, you're tired, but you think you're hungry and you eat. I mean, this is really this is real. And if you don't sleep, you're not burning cortisol, you're not burning your stress hormones. So of course, it's extremely important to be able to sleep and not with medication to be able to truly just lay down and go to sleep. So again, there's so many, when you're talking about sleep, everything, we're talking about <clears throat> how you handle stress emotionally. We're talking about physically, how is your nervous system functioning? Is your nervous system so hyped up that you just can't relax? And you know, many times when someone can't sleep, they can't digest their food because it's it's similar part of your nervous system that keeps you relaxed in order to fall asleep in order to in order to digest your food. So when someone is very, very stressed out, they won't be able to sleep and they will have some digestive issues as well. If you're suffering from that, it's obvious. It's obvious what's happening. And so so with sleep, it's again um being able to burn, you, you need, your body needs to be able to burn off cortisol. You're, you need to, we need to look at where your stress is coming from physically and emotionally. We need to address the nervous system to see why is the nervous system not balanced? Why is it not able, letting you relax, letting your parasympath, parasympathetic section of your nervous system turn on so that you can sleep? What are you eating? You know, what kind of toxicity is in your body? There's so many different things involved with being able to sleep that we really have to look at everything. We have to look at exercise. Just the simple, simply exercising, even which we talk, when we talked about how you do the surge training for 12 minutes, 15 minutes a day, the simple act of taking 15 minutes and exercising could, mean, could be the difference in getting a really good night's sleep, eating properly, <clears throat> getting the adjustments so that your nervous system is functioning, so that your brain is properly communicating with all organs and systems in your body so that everything can function the way it's supposed to function. But lacking sleep, again, is a very, very serious problem that's going to lead to much more serious conditions later on. It's not something you ignore and it's not something you take a pill for. So if you do have an issue sleeping, I've already spoken and seen Susan actually, and she's doing much better. But if you have a problem sleeping, you have to call, come in for a free consultation. Again, the first 10 people come and they get free consultations. My, my name is Dr. Allie Mendelson. My phone number is 888 888- Five two two three 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 one. You know, you just come in. We're going to sit down for 15, 20 minutes, try to figure out what's going on with you. Why aren't you sleeping so that we can get to the root cause of that problem and fix it? I'm not going to give you a supplement or anything like that so that you sleep because it's not about that. You never want to manage a symptom, even with something natural. If you have to take an herb every day to sleep, that's a problem. You never want to, even if it's, it's way better than Ambien, don't get me wrong, you don't want to take something to make you sleep. Your body should be able to sleep. And if it's not, we have to fix it. We have to fix the problem. And once in a while, you may have issues sleeping. Once in a while, I have an issue falling asleep. I have anxiety. I'm nervous about something. I use lavender essential oil, take melatonin, and I sleep and I'm fine. But, it's, but if it was every day... That is a huge, huge cause for concern. It's not something to ignore. It's not something to take lightly. There's too many times in our culture that we just say, oh, you know, everyone has a problem sleeping, so whatever. You know, it's it's not that. It's it's been it's so common to be sick. It's so common to not sleep, to not go to the bathroom, to have headaches, to be overweight to be massively stressed out, just because these things are common doesn't mean they're normal. You don't have to live like that. You can choose a different path. You can have a better life. We need, what we need to do is we need to find what is causing these symptoms. All of these symptoms, that's all they are. It's a symptom. It's a signal that your body is giving you. It's telling you, it's begging you there's something wrong inside. It's not working properly. We need to figure out why. 
right? And the way we figure out why is through the five essentials. Looking at your brain, do you have a healthy functioning brain? Are you getting the omegas that you need? Do you have a good attitude? How is your stress? How do you handle stress? Everyone has stress. How do you react to stress? We need to find out maximize nervous system. Is your nervous system functioning? Is your brain properly communicating with your organs so that your organs can work the way they're supposed to? Are, and next, are you eating properly? Are you eating a whole lot of junk and processed food, not getting enough nutrients? Of course you can't sleep. Of course you're going to be depressed if you're like that. Of course you're going to be sick and have headaches and be overweight if you're putting garbage into your body. <clears throat> you're putting junk in. You don't know what to eat. Let's fix that. will slowly change your lifestyle. No diets, nothing like that. Change your lifestyle slowly so you have better habits. How are you exercising? Are you exercising properly, doing surge training, or are you just doing the daily, doing the grind and going to the gym for two hours and just kind of jogging on the treadmill and doing a little weights, Not, um, but that's going to build up cortisol and that's going to put more stress on your body. How and what is the toxicity like in your body? Do you have toxins in your body? Are you putting too many toxins with pesticides and with personal care products, shampoo and toothpaste that has sodium lauryl sulfate in it, that has propylene glycol in it? Propylene glycol, by the way, is antifreeze. And guaranteed, if you look around your house right now, you're going to find about 10 things that you use every single day on your body that has propylene glycol or antifreeze on it. Those are just two chemicals. Then you have the processed food and the sugars and the artificial sweeteners and the commercial meat that's full of hormones and steroids and antibiotics. You know, I don't want to overwhelm you, but I just want you to know that there's something that you can do to get better. And what I do at my office is we teach you and help you change your habits slowly over time so you have a better life, a better lifestyle. So please call me and let's get you in and figure out what's going on so that we can fix it. My name is Dr. Allie Mendelson. I'm in Farmington, right near the West Hartford border. My phone number is 888-522-3331. Again, the phone number is 888-522-3331. The first 10 people who call every week get a free consultation is about 15 20 minutes so we can figure out what's going on and you can also look at my website i have a radio show website dralliesho.com d-r-a-l-l-i-e show.com that's all i have time for today Uh, may god bless you all i hope to hear from you soon and have a blessed day